Hey, welcome back, everybody. This is Harley. So we are going to talk again about Covenant. If you watched my last video, then you already know how to get up and running. You know how to get it installed. Um, but this time, I want to help you actually get your grunts installed. I want to get Covenant pushed down into the environment that you're working in. Um, and we're going to do that with a little help from a tool called Cracked Map Exec. So if you like this type of content, go ahead and just start by hitting the like button. You can always change it later if you change your mind. Um, and consider hitting the subscribe button if you like you know, seeing this type of, uh, of this type of video. Um, I, I make all types of content like this. So I'm not going to waste any more time with all that junk. Just here we go. Let's dive in. <laughs> all right, everybody, welcome back. So what we've got going on, there's a lot on the screen, but uh, it's it's not it's not too complicated. We've got two attack machines this time, not just the single Kali box that we're used to. Uh, in addition to Kali, we've also got the Windows 10 computer that's running as our Covenant C2 server. Uh, so that's what this is. If you don't know how to get this far, if you don't know how to set this up, check out the video that I've got popping up on your screen right now. Uh, this is the last video I made, and it kind of walked you through the whole installation process, and it's, it's pretty quick and easy to do. Um, once you've got this up and ready, then we'll just kind of continue on. Uh, on the right side, we have three victim machines this time, and all three of them are a part of the same Windows uh, Active Directory domain. In fact, this one in the middle here is actually the domain controller. Um, so these are the three computers that we're going to be targeting. So this demonstration, what we're going to do is we're going to be kind of pretending that we're on an internal Active Directory assessment or an internal network assessment. Um, and we've already captured at this point, we've captured the, the username and password combination for a domain admin on the network. In this case, that domain admin here is L. James. We'll come into the properties so we can just verify. Yep, he's definitely a part of the domain admin group. So we already know his username and password. You know, we could have we could have stolen this a number of ways. Maybe we fished it out of them. Maybe we captured a hash doing something, and then we're able to crack that hash offline. Um, or maybe we like saw it in plain text in the description field in Active Directory. Like whatever method we use to pull down that password is kind of outside of scope of this conversation. Um, but at this point, we already have his credentials, and we want to see well what can we do with them. So my favorite tool, when I have a set of credentials, my favorite tool, the, the one of the first things I do is I start seeing, well, hey, where are these credentials valid? If they're valid on one computer, you know, um, can I use them anywhere else? And this is a great way to try to identify, you know, maybe you have domain admin, like maybe you suspect it's domain admin creds, but you're not sure. Um, one thing you could do is use crack map except. So that's what we're going to be using today. And we'll go and we'll leverage SMB. And we're going to uh, specify who we're targeting. So 10.0.1.10 through .20 is our target range. You could also come in and you could say like 0 slash 24 to specify the whole subnet if that's within scope. And if that's what you're looking to do is look through the whole network. Um, you could even specify like a single host, a single IP address like that. But in our case, we're going to go 10 through 20. And we're going to specify a username of L James and then his password here which we've got just like that. So I'm just going to run this. So that way you can get an idea of what Crack Map Exec does. What it's doing is it looks for any uh, Windows device that's actually authenticating or using SMB on the network. And it found three machines here. And then what it did is it tried to take the username and the password combination we provided it, and it tried to authenticate against each one of these computers. And if it was successful, it told us. Um, but in fact, if you ever see this pwned indication, that means that not only are they valid credentials on that computer, but they're actually elevated credentials. They're, they're uh, administrator on that computer. So you know you've got admin rights. And once you have admin rights, that's where things get really, really exciting. Because that's when you have the ability to install software or execute commands or pop reverse shells. So we've got admin rights on all three of these computers, right? And that makes sense because L. James is domain admin. Um, but what can we do with that? Well, we can run the same command we ran a sec ago, but we can even use dash X to specify a command that we want to execute. Um, and lowercase x will use command prompt while capital X uses PowerShell. So I'm going to use capital X and we'll just run a quick who am I command just as a, a quick proof of concept. 
that we've actually got command execution. And there we go. We get L James return for each machine because that's who we're authenticating as when we run the command. But you can confirm on every one of these computers it was able to execute that command and, and return the answer. So we've got command execution, and we've got it very, very quickly with crack map exec. Um, but how do we take that to the next level? How do we get that command execution to turn into actual command and control through Covenant? Well, let's start by just signing in real quick. Incident logins, and then we'll throw in the password. Okay. And if you uh, if you were here last video, you saw me create this listener. Um, all I've done since then is I've created the second listener here, and that's because I added a new network interface. I've got a new network address that uh, I'm using. So the only difference between these two is my connect address. You can create your own by coming into create, and for the most part, using the default settings are typically fine. Just make sure that your connect address that you specify here is actually the IP address of your C2 server. Um, and that's on the right interface that is able to communicate with the devices you're targeting. So I've got my listener created. It is listening at the moment. The next step in the process is to come in and create a launcher. And we already kind of proved that we can run PowerShell. So I think sticking to PowerShell is a great move. And we can come into PowerShell here. And the defaults have seemed to work for me so far. Um, so I'm going to leave all of that alone. And if we come to the bottom, I've got two different launchers to choose from. I've got the regular one, and then I've got an encoded one. Now, the encoded one is helpful because it typically does a little bit better at bypassing uh, any sort of AV or antivirus that you have in place. So when you can use the encoded payload, that typically seems to work better for me for that reason, as long as you're able to execute it straight into memory. If you have to download it to the computer first as like a PowerShell script or a PowerShell file, um, then you know a AV might be able to scan it. But if you can execute encoded payloads straight into memory, that that typically does much better at bypassing AV than using something like this. But they both essentially do the same thing. So what I want to start by looking at though is if I just copy this and I come into a Notepad. Look how long this command is. I mean, it is very, very long. If I were to copy this whole thing, and if I were to throw that into our crack map exec window as a PowerShell command, it's actually not going to work. And that's because crack map exec expects, I think it's got like a, a 250 or something like that character limit. Um, and this definitely exceeds that. And the encoded launcher definitely, <laughs> I mean, it's even bigger, right? Like here's the encoded payload. So. Um, we're not going to be able to use these. They're, they're just too long and crazy. So what I want to do is I want to find a way to, to make some sort of staged payload. You know, like, and what I mean by that is I want a command that's going to tell PowerShell to go out and download the rest of our payload and then run that. So Covenant actually has this capability built in. If you come into the host tab, you can actually come in and you can specify a path to host this up. So like you could say launchers, and then you could specify like ps.ps1. It doesn't matter what you name it, right? Um, and then when you click host, watch watch this, right? Right now it says new object, IO memory stream. If I click host, our command completely changed. Now we're looking at new object net.web client. And that's because it's actually telling it to go out and download this remote file. So if we copy this whole thing, I'm just going to delete all this stuff, paste it into Notepad. Look how much smaller our command is now. It is super, super small because all that the command is, is it's just saying download this remote PowerShell script and execute that. And then we just need to make sure that this PowerShell script is being hosted up on a web server someplace. Now, I've actually had a ton of trouble getting Covenant to host these PowerShell scripts properly. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or if it's like a misconfiguration or, or something. Maybe you'll have better luck. But I personally like to actually host my own PowerShell scripts um, through Kali because then I can also you know, look for Git requests and I can know when the request hits my web server and all that. Uh, and again, maybe you could do all that through Covenant. I just, I don't know how. <laughs> so what I'm going to show you is how to actually come in and download this this file, we're going to download this PowerShell script, and I'm going to just open this with Notepad real quick. 
So this is the actual script that gets downloaded. So you can see, yeah, this is long, but if our payload says just download and execute this file, um, then that's okay for this to be long because our payload's still gonna be small. So I'm gonna grab this whole thing and I'm actually just gonna copy it. If we come into our Kelly box, so I'll just make a new window here. And I'm just gonna make a new file called ps.ps1. And we'll just come in and we'll paste the contents of that script. And there it is. All right, so inside of this ps.ps1 file, I just pasted everything we copied out of the downloaded PowerShell Covenant file. So we're, we, we've got that now. Um, the next step in the process is to come into here. We'll come back to our host tab. And if we look at our launcher here, if we copy this again, come into Notepad. Oh, we still have it here. So what it's doing is it's saying, OK, spawn PowerShell pass the command, and what is the command? Well, here's our command, this IEX new object. Download this remote file called blah, 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 PS1, right? Well, I need to adjust where this is hosted at because it's not hosted at this IP. If we do a quick IP config on my Kali box, let's see, this is the actual IP address. That's a part of that one, you know, 1001 network. So we'll come in and we'll specify that. And I don't have a launchers folder, so we'll get rid of that. Okay, so what we're gonna say is we're gonna say go out to our Kali machine and look for a file called ps.ps1. So we need to make sure that this machine or this uh, file is being hosted up. So we've got it in here, right? It's right there. But let's go ahead and use Python to host that file up as a, as a web server for us. Okay. So now we've got a web server running that's hosting this file up. And we could just kind of confirm that. Like if we copy this IP and we just go out to it, we see ps.ps1 right there, right? So that's our PowerShell script. It's being hosted by our Kelly machine. And we even see a little Git request right there from when I just browsed to it. All right, cool. So we've got our command and we've got everything hosted. What if we just copy this and we put that into crack map and we see what happens? Well, we could, but I haven't had good luck with that either. Um, and that's because I think of all of these special characters. When you start throwing special characters into the mix, it, it just makes things a lot messier. Like crack map might not know how to deal with a, a single quote, for example, right? Or even a double quote. So what we're gonna do, and hopefully we didn't just lose these computers. Okay, cool, they, we're good. <laughs> um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to encode this command. Because if we can encode this, then we can create an encoded payload, just like we see here, and pass it without any special characters. So I actually have a, a blog post on this topic. Let's see if we can go out to that real quick. Uh, if you just go in here, you can always do question mark s equals, and then you can specify like a search term like covenant. So we'll do that. And then I've got this blog right here which is exactly the topic we're covering today. But if we scroll down a bit, I've got a section of code that I found super helpful, and it's this piece right here. So I'm gonna copy all of this, and we'll come in, paste it into our notepad. And what we're saying is we're creating a, a variable here called string, and we're just setting string equal to whatever the command is that we want to encode. So in this case, our command is gonna be this IEX new object download string, go out to our Kali box, ps.ps1. So I'm gonna paste that in here because that is the actual string that we wanna encode. And then we create a new variable called encoded command. And it just opens up the contents of string, which is what we just specified. And it's going to actually come in and it's gonna convert it to a base64 string in Unicode format. And it's going to store that into this variable. And then it's just going to echo that variable back out to us. And so if I were to copy all this, we can open up our own little PowerShell window here. And we'll paste that in. So because we told it to echo it back, now we see the encoded command. So I'm going to make this bigger. And we'll just grab this encoded command. And we're done with that. Minimize this. Get rid of all this junk. So now what we can do is we can run this PowerShell command, but we can actually come in and we could specify our new encoded command here. And if you come back to the blog, all we need to do is grab this guy 
and then we just need to fill in the placeholder. So this encoded command placeholder, that's going to be the contents of this right here that we just generated. So this is our final command that we're going to execute with crack math exec. What it's going to do is it's going to go into PowerShell, it's going to hide the window, and then it's going to pass along this encoded command right here. And the contents, if you were to decode that command, are simply just saying, go out to this Kali Linux machine, download and execute this PowerShell file. And that PowerShell file contains our payload for the Covenant launcher. Okay, so we've got everything in place. I'm going to copy this out. Let's head back into Covenant real quick. We'll look at our Grunts tab, and we don't see any connected at the moment. We do have this one here that's grayed out. That's from the last video that I made. So let's head over to our Kelly machine, and I'm going to just clear the contents here just so that way we can get you know, a nice clear screen. And we'll do the same up here. OK, so we'll paste in this command. And you know, I don't have any single quotes or anything, and I think that that's okay. Oh, actually, if you look at this, I, I paste it in the PowerShell command, but not crack map. So let's clear this out again. Let's grab our crack map exec. And instead of running who am I, I'll throw in some quotes and then I'll paste our PowerShell right inside of those quotes. Okay, so now we're gonna tell it to go out to all of these machines that are within this range, authenticate with these credentials launch a PowerShell window and execute this encoded payload. And if everything works, we should get a bunch of Git requests here in our web server as the computers go out and download the file. And then we should get a bunch of grunts showing up here in Covenant as that file gets executed. All right, moment of truth. Got the pwn, got the gets, and got a grunt, got a grunt, and there's our third grunt. So three grunts, say activated. So far, I only see two connecting. But hey, check that out. We were able to just use crack map exec to go out and, and basically install grunts in bulk for us. So imagine we're on a real internal network where there's dozens of computers. And with a single command, we're able to get command execution and install multiple grunts. And now we've got full control to do extra things, right? So like I showed you in the last video, you can come in and you can run a task that might just run a regular command, or maybe you run mini cats and you pull out any credentials, or maybe you run a keylogger and you check and monitor for any passwords that they might type in, or whatever it is that you're looking to do, you've got all those capabilities of the C2 now at your fingertips on any machine on the network. So that's it, guys. I hope that you found this one somewhat helpful. The next time you're on a pin test, definitely check this out. Um, it, as long as, obviously, installing uh, Covenant agents are within scope, that's, that's of course, the most important. Make sure your client's OK with you doing that. Uh, sometimes, once you get domain admin, they say, OK, stop. <laughs> but if they want you to take it further, if they want you to kind of show them the real impact of domain admin, this is a great way to do it, and it's an easy way uh, to kind of compromise the entire network in bulk. If you have any questions for me, feel free to throw them down into the comment section. Uh, I would love to hear what you think about this type of content. If this is something that you, you are interested in and want to see some more, let me know. Um, and then, of course, if you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe, catch me in the next video. We're going to be making all kinds of stuff like this. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Peace out.